Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill and in this video we are discussing the next topic which is declaring variable of the chapter 2. If you have landed directly here, this video is a part of the series I am preparing for Java certification. I am following OCP complete study guide book written by Jeannie and Scott. This video will be short and sweet. I have only one agenda to discuss that is how to declare variables and various rules to follow on how to name a variable. Before we jump into the naming rules, I just want to reiterate a terminology. I have been using it already and I will be using it in my future videos as well. So it's definitely worth to reiterate. The first term is declaration. Declaration is a statement where we tell Java that we are to use a variable. In that statement, we give it a variable name and we also give the type of information that variable will store. So in this example, so I have three variables declared, I, check and amount. And the type of those variables is int, boolean and float respectively. The next term is initialization. Initialization is a statement where we initialize or store a value into the variable. We can only initialize already declared variables. We can also declare and initialize a variable in the same line. So as you see int i is equal to 500, I have declared int i and also I have initialized the value 500 to i in the very first example. So nothing special, just wanted to reiterate. Now let's look into the rules of choosing the names of the identifier. Uh, you know, in the previous statement, we had a state uh, variable called i. So that variable i needs to follow some rules. There are in total four rules that we need to follow. The very first rule is that an identifier must begin with a letter or a dollar symbol or an underscore. The second rule is identifiers can include numbers but it cannot start with a number. The third is the underscore symbol is not allowed as an identifier since Java 9. So we cannot have a variable just called an underscore. It can start with an underscore and followed by other valid characters, but cannot be just underscore by itself. And the fourth rule is you cannot use reserve words as identifier names. So reserve words are the words that has a special meaning in Java. That's the reason we cannot use reserve words. On the next slide, we will look into all the reserve words that Java has. And don't worry, you don't have to remember all of them for the exam. If you do get a question, Java will mostly use a commonly used reserved words. Having said that, once you complete the whole book, you will know almost every word and, and also what their meaning is. In fact, the highlighted words on the screen, we have already discussed those. So when we discuss primitive, we have seen float, boolean, character, int, double, byte, and long already. And also we saw true and false as a, as a literals. Be prepared to be tested on the variable names. So let me give you some examples from the book. So this slide has the valid variable names. All the variable names follow the rules that we just studied. So no surprises there. Now this image has all the invalid variable names. The first one starts with a number which we know is not allowed. The second variable has a special character at the rate only two special characters that are allowed is a dollar and underscore. So at the rate is not allowed. The third one has a, again special character star 
and also the variable name is starting with the star. The variable name cannot start anything but a letter, dollar sign or an underscore. In the fourth line, we, have, we are using a reserved word public as a variable name. Again, we have seen this is not allowed. Underscore by itself is not allowed anymore. Now moving on to the next slide. Even though you can do crazy things with identifier, please don't. Java have conventions so that the code is readable and consistent and having variables in the camel case is one of them. Camel case is where you capitalize the first letter of every word. So this one is a class name. It is very easy to read the second name than the first one and that is due to the camel casing. Now moving on to the next example. This is a very long variable name. As you see, reading the variable written in camel case is way easier to read than when it's not camel case. Another style you might see in exam or in real world programs is a snake case where every word is separated by an underscore and you have already seen underscore is a valid character to be used in variable name. Now let's look into the next topic which is declaring multiple variables in the same line. In Java we can declare and also initialize if we want multiple variables in the same line. The variable needs to be separated by comma and also keep in mind that all the variables should be of the same type. So in this first example we have s1 and s2 both are of string and they are separated by comma so it's a valid statement. In the second line we have s3 and s4 again they are same type separated by comma all good. Now in the next example this is where it starts getting tricky. We are declaring three variables i1, i2 and i3 but we are only initializing the third variable. So i1 and i2 are not initialized. So keep that in mind. Now let's look into a bit more uh, trickier declaration and initialization. So what do you think? Is it a valid declaration? Yes, it is. In Java, it ignores the new line character, which is a character which is inserted when we hit enter. And it also ignores the white spaces. So this statement in your mind, you can translate it to this statement with commas moving right after the variable names. And also you can translate it to this one, which is removing the new line character. So this statement is effectively same as int i1, i2, i3. Just that c1 and c3 both are initialized, c2 is not. Now let's look onto the next one. What do you think of this? This is not a valid statement. And the reason it's not valid is there is a comma missing after c1. So as I mentioned, we should always include comma in between various variables. Now as a last example, so this one again it's not valid because we are trying to declare two different types of variable int and string in the same statement. So this is not allowed. That concludes the video. That's all we wanted to look for declaration. If you have liked the video, please hit the like button and for my future videos, please subscribe to my channel so that you get notified whenever I do a new upload. Until next time, bye bye.